Right then guys, there's been a, a slight clearing in the weather. It stopped raining, but you can see it's, it's left a, a bit of mist behind. So, as I promised, the zombie slayer. This is the Bayonet Jackal. Obviously a crossbow. Right, what comes with it? Okay, we start off with here. Start off with a detachable quiver. If I can just take her off. Help if I did it the right way, wouldn't it? Right. Detachable quiver with three carbon bolts. Okay. So that comes with it as standard. We also have um, a three dot laser um, scope on it on a Picatinny rail, as you can see. The illuminated reticle, it's either green or it's red, and on each of those it has five different brightness settings. Now, inside, when you look through the reticle, it's not magnified. You have three dots. Now, I would tend to zero the middle dot at 30 yards. So, if you're closer, you either elevate or, or drop, dependent upon... I'm not going to go into sight alignment, i.e. aiming. You know the score. Right, so, um, looking down here, you can see that it has a cantilever system with cams on it. That sort of aids with the whole cocking system. Now, with this, you get... Let me show you. It is... Let me just check which pocket. A cocking rope. So I'll demonstrate this in a minute. Basically, it goes over the back of the stock, goes on. I'll do a full demonstration in a minute. Now, manufacturer's recommendation is that you do use that every time you cock it. Because if you were doing it by hand, you may put adverse stress on, if you don't cock it completely straight, you'll put adverse stress on one side of the bow. So what they like to see is you're using this. But sometimes it's not convenient all the time. So what have we got? We've got 150 pound pull strain on this thing. Your average bow, long bow, 60 pound, maybe, maybe for a really powerful one, 80 pound, 150 pound on this. So basically what you have to be able to do is lift with your fingertips 150 pound, 75 kilos off the deck to be able to cock this by hand. If you look at some of the videos on YouTube, I haven't actually seen someone do it by hand. And as it's not recommended by Bayonet, um, wow, I'm still going to do it, guys. Okay, I've been zeroing in my scope this morning. And um, it's ridiculously powerful. What you have to bear in mind is your laws of the land. My laws are different where I live to Scotland, to the States, to Canada. This potentially, if you look on a lot of videos or a lot of reviews, there are people in the States who are taking down large game, namely um, large boar and deer with this. Where I'm from, that's not allowed. This, well, believe it or not, you don't need a firearm certificate or a license for this. But strangely, you do need a firearm certificate for an air rifle. This is Northern Ireland we're talking about. Um, I don't understand that. I do believe that these should be licensed. Potentially um, in the wrong hands deadly weapon, um, more deadly than any air rifle, 
and I would say um, more deadly than a, a 2.2 LR. And up until maybe 40 yards, I would say this is more deadly than a 2.2.3. And, um, well, I said I was going to go out to play with my toy. And, and I use that terminology loosely because it's not playtime. Um, this is a very serious bit of kit. So, without further ado, I'm going to cock it by hand first. So you can see how I would do it. Now, stirrup on the ground, foot solid. Put the butt stop into chest, two fingers, pull. Automatically puts the safety on. Automatically. So every time you go to pull, you have to take the safety off. Push. Okay? So just going to load up a bolt here. Not going to use my carbon fiber ones. Not yet. So she's in. She's locked. Now she has to go all the way back to lift up the safety mechanism. If I if I don't have her all the way back, I cannot push the safety off. That's a great, great um, safety device that you have upon this. Now, she's loaded. However, safety is on. I cannot pull it. So, I'm just going to go over, release the safety. I'm going to stick my scope on first. Thirty yards. Safety off. Middle dot. Booyah! Now, second shot. I'll do it the recommended way. Okay. And you'll see, may consider it a little bit faffy, if you like that word, faffy. Right, okay, so my bearing cams, hooks, hook on. So, behind the scope, on there, and pull. That's it. She's locked. Safety is on. Let me just put that away. Load another bolt. I just ensure that my tips are, are nice and tight every time before I load a bolt on. Okay, she's in. Let's go. Off. Boom. Okay, one last thing before we go down and have a look. Lube. Lubrication of the strings, working parts. Now, Barnett do a bit of lube. And I would tend to just put a little bit on the string after about, about 10 shots. Also, where it passes through here, put a little bit there, and that just really prolongs the life of your string. They're not that expensive, but a little bit fiddly when you want to, you know, change them. So that'll prolong the life. Let's go and have a look and see. Wow. See why I believe that these things should be, um, well, dare I say, licensed at least. You know, these things can do a lot of danger, a lot of, uh, a lot of, look at that. Okay. Just going to lift her up now and you'll see. 35 yards. 
Okay. It's through to there. It's 35 yards. Okay. Now you see. Let me get this out. No one has come out, boys. Twister. So. Pretty dangerous. In the wrong hands. Safety, safety, safety. All the time. Something like that. Wow. Anyway, that's my Bennett Jackal. Um, zombie Slayer. Bless you guys. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, stay safe.